Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. We rejoice this beautiful sunny morning. So glad to see you all here. Since I cannot read your faces and see that you are happy to be here, would you simply honk your horn? <laughs> sound what a glorious sound I want to remind you and we'll try to make sure we print this in the bulletin uh, next month Lord willing but the FM transmitter frequency is 100.1 and you can listen to the service then not only through the speakers but you can listen through it to it through your own car radio 100.1 on your FM dial please well not a dial but on your on your radio <laughs> I have just two announcements uh, actually only one and then John will come and share a few others and my one announcement is that there will be pastoral teaching this Thursday evening via zoom if you're not on that list and you'd like an invitation please uh, simply contact me at Richard Allen farmer 1951 at gmail.com and I'll see that you're added to that list we'll be looking at Psalm 119 verses 89 through 96 Psalm 119, verses 89 through 96. John Matthews. Good morning. Welcome to Crossroads Presbyterian Church in this wonderful weather. Who would have thought it'd be this nice? Well, I got a couple of announcements. Uh, I want to draw your attention to the tables up front here, over on my left and on your right. Uh, these are greetings to our missionaries. If you'd like to come up and uh, uh, go ahead and add your greetings to them. If you don't want to, there's actually some information. You can actually greet, greet them directly in the dire uh, online. But if you want to, you can use your own pen or some pen surprise supplied there for you to use. Again, those are missionary cards. It's not in the bulletin, but this is the time of year when the officer nominating committee starts to meet and starts to accept nominations for uh, new elders, new deacons, and officer nominating committee members. And you, you got received a golden sheet of paper, you can't miss it. It's to, uh, has the nomination on it, it has exp explanations and, and duties, and responsibilities of elders, deacons, and also nominating committee members. Please read that, pray about it, and please nominate some folks that you think would make good officers for those prospective uh, 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 chair or prospective departments. But anyways, long story short, please look at this, please fill this out. Uh, we would like to have these back, if we can, by the end of the month. This is the beginning of March. By the end of March, please return these with uh, nominations. You can uh, mail them in. Uh, oh, I'd like to do, uh, if uh, the people who are a member of the Officer Nominating Committee could please step outside your car and stand up. We have um, uh, Judy Morgan, Dolores Rose, Myrna Smith, Mary Hesse, Dorothy Haynes, Dr. Small, Minerva Sin uh, Chambers of Sinclair, Stella Murray, and myself. So if you see us and you already filled in some nominations today, you can hand these to us, okay? So please, this is a very important part of the, the life of our church. Uh, our officers are very important to what we do, making very important decisions. And uh, please, please, please pray about this whole process. Pray for the officer nominating committee. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, members, for standing up. If you will, if you want to, you can stand. But we're going to do the call to worship. It's a responsive reading from Psalm 96. And I'll start. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord. Praise His name. Declare His marvelous deeds among all peoples. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name. Bring an offering and come into His courts. Now we're singing our opening hymn. Now thank thee, we all our God.
together, starting. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Of what we have done, of what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. In your mercy, forget what we have been. Help us attend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. And our assurance of pardon anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, a new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Now let's turn to our affirmations and insert in your bulletin. <coughs> responsive reading as well. Our common identity. Who are we, Crossroads? We are the people of God. Yes. Why do we exist as a church? To love God and worship Him. To love and care for one another and to share the joys and the struggles of growing as a community, seeking to bring glory to His name. And why are we here? We are here to joyfully worship and serve the Lord share the message of Jesus and the gospel all who will hear through lives that demonstrate His love, mercy, and justice in all our relationships, in our community, in our nation, in our world. Crossroads, how can we be such a community? By deciding to follow Jesus and to make a daily decision to live for God today. By earnestly studying His Word and seeking to value what God values, and to practice the principles found in his word. Crossroads for the glory of God, let us live like this. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Let us continue worshiping our God as we lift his name on high with our song.
His work is perfect, and all His ways are just. His work, greatness to our God, His work is perfect, and all His ways are just. items about which we need to pray in no order they are our country the ministries of this church our families and friends the lost our colleagues who are serving on the mission field both locally and internationally one of our members gave me a great idea. This comes from the prayer ministry of Annette Smith. Uh, and I, I wanted to share it with you. I told her I'm going to tell the saints that on Sunday. Uh, she said, uh, it would be a great thing if we went to the parking lot of hospitals and schools, I might add, and just sat in the car and prayed for what's going on in that hospital for healthcare workers and for patients, for family members who are there, sometimes some of them just simply visiting by looking at the window of a loved one, but sitting in a parking lot and doing prayer on site at a hospital is a great idea. You could even do it at a school. Uh, some of our schools are open and some of them just have the teachers inside who are teaching remotely, uh, teaching virtually from their classrooms. But the parking lots of some of our schools are beginning to fill with administrators and faculty. What a great thing if you would just go park in the parking lot and pray for that school. Pray for the faculty, for the students, for the staff. Uh, that be a, That's a great idea. As we go to prayer, I want to urge you to look at creative ways to do your praying and parking in a parking lot might be uh, one of those creative ways. We continue to pray for Audrey Godfrey, Mark Brown, with whom I visited yesterday, he's coming along, Dorothy Johnson, Michael Hairston, Jasmine, John Gregory, Sharonda Blake, Alberta Settles, Isaac Wood, Liam Clark, Doreen Wanless, Betty Wiley, uh, Betsy Wiley rather, is coming along after uh, some surgery on her arm. Uh, Edward and Uvalin Patterson and Deborah Miller, who is here today. We continue to rejoice. And then we want to continue to pray for those doing their grief work, the Settles family and Byron James and his family. Byron is in Great Britain now uh, for the services for his mother and he will have to quarantine while there so he's going to be gone about a month we want to be in prayer for our brother byron let us pray holy god we thank you for this opportunity to pray thank you that we can do it publicly outdoors with microphone on. Thank you that we do not live in a place where we must pray secretly, underground, in a locked room, in soft voices, hoping we don't get discovered. Thank you that we can send it through the PA system and rejoice 
that we are yours and you are our God. Thank you that we live in a land where this freedom can be enjoyed. We thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for the weather. Thank you that we didn't get rained out. Thank you that it's not bone chilling cold. We thank you that we're not in South Dakota. <laughs> we give you praise for your creation. We are enjoying simply looking at the trees and the grass and the sky and the sun and rejoicing in all that you have made. Thank you for your handiwork. The heavens declare your glory. The firmament is showing off your handiwork. We rejoice in it. We thank you for the privilege of intercessory prayer. We do now come to you not in behalf of ourselves, but in behalf of these whose names have been called an assortment of needs represented here. Before we dare pray for ourselves, we would pray for others. We thank you for what you have already done in them, for them, in their bodies, and we pray your continued touch upon them. Some of them are bedridden. We thank you that they're clean and comfortable and well cared for. Some of them are temporarily laid up some of them are going to return to work, return to their activities in short order. Others are on their way home to you. You are allowing them these weeks and months of slow transition. Thank you for allowing us to have them this long. Some on this list and in our hearts and in our minds are in deep sorrow having had to say goodbye to a loved one and even if that loved one be now in your presence it still hurts their leaving leaves a hole in the hearts of these we pray that you continue to comfort sustain hold up these who have felt the crushing blow of death. We would pray for the President of these United States and the Vice President, for the Chambers of Congress, for our Governor, for our Mayor, for all those with a leadership title. I pray that they would go beyond the title and function as leaders function as warriors for justice may they remember why they were elected why we sent them where we sent them may their motives be pure their hearts be glad their hands be open their minds as well thank you for the way you move through government and structures. Grant that justice may be meted out <clears throat> in these places of power. We give you thanks for the ministries of this congregation, for our leaders, for everyone that makes up this faith community and pray that you'd help us to be steadfast and committed even during this time when we're not in the building. We thank you that the building is closed but the church is open. We thank you that you continue to call us to serve people, to proclaim your name, to go. We pray that you'd ever make us mindful. Thank you for your word, for the opportunity to study it, to read it daily. May we not shirk in our responsibility to know your truth that we might share it. We pray for the holy conversations we're going to have in the next weeks and months. Use us to proclaim you to people who desperately need you. We pray for the lost. 
those who do not know Jesus Christ as Savior. Nice people. People who are highly moral, respectable, humanitarian, philanthropic, but lost. We pray that they would come to know the Savior. We pray that you might use us as part of that whole matrix of people and circumstances that brings them to their knees. Oh Lord our God, we pray for our colleagues on the mission field, some serving right here in the U.S., others serving in another culture. We pray some are underfunded. We pray that you would use your people to bring their financial support in. Some are in difficult places where it is very difficult to make any kind of headway, inroad into another culture. I pray that you'd help them not to be discouraged. May they begin to see some sign that they're making a difference. I pray that you'd open up conversations that they might begin to befriend nationals. Pray for their families as they adjust to a new culture, a new climate, new schools. Perhaps they're homeschooling their children. Would you please aid them, guide them? Now for the week ahead, we pray. We know not what it holds, but we are certainly encouraged that you will be with us no matter what we face this week. For you have promised, and we rejoice in your promise, that you will never leave us or forsake us. And you promised that whoever sought you would find you. And we're counting on it. Go with us, we pray, and we shall ever be grateful as you make wonderful things happen. And as you do in us what we couldn't possibly do in ourselves, we bless you. Thank you, praise you evermore. In the strong name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 I want to call at this time, <clears throat> first I want to thank you for your continued uh, giving. Uh, but just before we talk about that, I'm going to ask John Matthews to come and lead us in our recitation our unison recitation of the Apostles' Creed. If you're able to stand, otherwise you remain in your cars or recite the Apostles' Creed, then you're bold and assert. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered and under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then shall come the judge of the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Take a seat. Let me thank you for your continued faithfulness to your own pledges and promises made. We continue to rejoice. I sat with my accountant this week and filed my taxes. I didn't actually pay them. I told them I, I don't want the government to take the money until they're due it. I don't want them holding it for a month uh, before April 15. But I filed the return and then uh, set it up that they can automatically draft my checking account on April 15, not a day before. Uh, when they owe me money, they take their sweet time getting it to me. And when I owe them money, I don't see to it that it doesn't go early, but goes right on time. But I rejoiced in the opportunity, the privilege of paying taxes. Because the only way you could pay income taxes that you had to have and income. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. I hear your amen honks and horns. Yes. Amen. And at the same time, we are paying Caesar 
we continue to bring our offering to the Lord and we give thanks for the privilege of doing so. And I want to remind you that there are many ways to give here at Crossroads, bank draft, text, uh, online giving, mail, and even a drive-by. You can bring your envelope right by here and we'll put it in a safe place until our receiving treasure comes and, and retrieves it. Uh, but you may, uh, given a number of ways, also want to remind you that on the first Sunday, uh, we are a blessing to the Samaritan Fund Ministry. We give that offering as well on the first Sunday. I'm going to call for Dorothy Jones and Sandy Lewis to come forward and uh, to present an offering to the church. Good morning. Good morning. Sandy and I would like to present a check in the honor of Gloria Granham, who died a year ago on March 12th. Um, this check is to complete Gloria's um, pledge for the Pave It project. And we would like to present it to Ruth, who's a member of the Pave It project committee. And if you are like me, I miss seeing Gloria. I miss seeing her on Sunday mornings inside our uh, praise practice because she had a huge ear. So if you miss Gloria, hunt your home. Thank you, thank you. And uh, we just thank you so much for all of you who did so much for her when she was here. And she will be forever remembered in our hearts. Thank you. I'll accept this on behalf of our church and on behalf of the Stewardship Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go ahead and pray for our, our tithe and offering our gifts. We thank you so much for Gloria even thinking about the Pave It Forward uh, process even after her passing away. Father God, we come before you right now. We cannot thank you enough for the air we breathe and this beautiful sunshine and also the gifts the, uh, our jobs, our, uh, all the things we do to get from you, to live, to be able to give to this church, and all the other things that we uh, provide income for, our missionaries. Bless these offerings, these tithes, and these gifts. Use them mightily for your kingdom's glory here on earth. And we just thank you for being your vessel. We pray also in your holy name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to read from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ as Mark recorded it, the last chapter of that Gospel, nearly the last verse. Mark chapter 16, I want to begin the reading at verse 14 and read verse 15 only from the New King James Version of the Scriptures. Later, he, Jesus, appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is the word of the Lord, Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Sermon series, and I'm calling it The Last Words of Jesus. Uh, I want to look at some of the last things Jesus said before he left the earth. And I'm going to break up this verse, this what is commonly called the Great Commission, Jesus commissioning his people 
I'm going to break this up into small pieces and look at it uh, a little bit at a time. Today, I want to preach on one word, and it is the word found in verse 15, go. Next week, I want to talk about what it means to go into all the world. The next week, I'm going to preach on one word and preach. Then the next week, I'm going to talk about the gospel. We are told not only to preach, but we are told what to preach, the gospel. Not preach motivational sermons, not preach feel-good stuff, preach the gospel to every creature. Uh, so over the next weeks, uh, you pray with me that we might have renewed understanding of commission, uh, I, uh, the Great Commission. I heard a joke about a guy who said to his Christian friend, you guys talk a lot about the Great Commission. Now exactly what percentage, what, what kind of commission do you get? Uh, as you're selling the gospel, what, how, how much is that great commission? What, what kind of, what kind of money we're talking about? Well, we're not talking about money at all. We're talking about an assignment. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for your word. Now, in these next few minutes, I pray that it would become clearer to us than it's ever been. Thank you for your assignment you have given to us, Lord Jesus. May we hear it. And more than that, may we do it in the strong name that is thine own, we pray. Amen. Uh, Sister Christy, would you just give me an E-flat chord, please? Daily I will worship thee, Lamb of God who died for me, who extended endless mercy daily i shall worship thee oh daily i shall worship thee lamb of god who died for me who extended endless mercy endless mercy daily Daily I shall worship thee. Amen. The last words of Jesus today, go. When we talk about sharing our faith, evangelizing the world, we tend to operate in the invitation mode. We'll say things like, come to my church, we're having a concert. Or, please attend our vacation Bible school at Crossroads. It's a good one. We have classes for all ages. Or, we're showing a film at our Family Life Center. Please come, there'll be refreshments. Come, it's a very friendly word of outreach. Come, we're having Zumba. C come, we're having a picnic. Come. It's the extension of hospitality in one word, come. But when Jesus challenges his disciples, when he leaves them his parting assignment before he leaves the earth and goes back to heaven from whence he came, he does not say come at all. He says to the disciples, go. Oh, no, but I, I want to invite people to come to Jesus. Yes, but for that to happen, you have to go. There's a passage in Luke chapter 10. I'll simply read it. Don't, don't bother to turn there. Let me simply read it. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. That's Luke chapter 10, verse three. Did you hear it? Go your way. Hey, you, get out of here and make me known. 
the Great Commission is Jesus' assignment to go. Go is the scariest part of the commission which Jesus utters. To go, one must leave one's comfortable place. One must leave one's setting. One must leave one's comfortable environment. One must leave one's posture, one's status, and relocate. And that relocation might be physical, might be cultural, it might be mental, it might be emotional, it might be theological. Do you remember when you left the tradition of which you might have been a part and you became part of this tradition? Do you recall leaving your profession in which you've been active for 15 years and you had a complete shift? You made a career change, do you remember that? You did a go. You left where you were and you went to something else. To go is to release the ropes which tether our ships to the dock. To go is to venture into unknown waters and territories. I've been watching oh, over the last few days a very, very slow series of videos on Prime, Amazon Prime Video. It's called Cruising the Cut. And all it is is video footage and some commentary of a British man who bought a narrow boat and he plies the canals of England. It's just very, very relaxing, very soothing. And I enjoy listening to him talk. He'll say, I'm gonna pull over here and moor my boat, and I'm gonna go to that pub over there and see the geese, and he'll, he'll do some footage of the swans or geese. It's, it's very, very slow. It's not at all a go video. Yeah, he is moving, but he's moving very slowly. This is what Jesus says. I don't want you spending all your time in the pub and on the dock. Get moving. You go. Go into all the world. But, but listen to that first word of the commission. You don't get to sit in your boat and just tell people to come to you. No, I, I want you to go, get out of here, relocate, switch things up, and get moving. The traditional thinking of the church has sometimes, unfortunately, been a focus on the called out part of our mission. We are the ecclesia. We are the called out ones. And that's a good thing. However, sometimes, that causes us to think of ourselves as called out from this world, ew, the world, and worldly ways. And sometimes that sends us into a bunker mentality, a refuge mentality. And we get called out of the world, and then we get called into our huddles and our places of ease and we withdraw from the very culture Jesus told us, commanded us to engage. When Jesus commissioned his followers, it was always to engagement, not to insular refuge mentality. It was always a call to go. Always, always, always. And we, the church, have sometimes put ourselves under voluntary house arrest. We stay in. But Jesus said, go. We've decided to stay indoors, huddled up, trying not to get our church clothes dirty. But Jesus says, go. Do you remember when God commissioned Abram? Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Do you hear it? Go. Abe, what's going to happen in your life is not going to happen if you stay here, if you get sedentary. Abe, 
what's going to happen for you is just not going to happen if you're always tethered to this safe post. Go. Cut the cord and go. Did you hear it? Yahweh calls Abram not to bask in the sunlight of his intimate relationship with God. No, God calls Abram to engage other people. In fact, verse 2 of Genesis 12 has God saying to Abram, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless you and you will be a blessing. And the only way Abram could be a blessing to other people is that Abram would have to go. <laughs> I did some reading this week as part of this sermon. On, I, I was curious as to whether it could be substantiated. I had a thought that children spend less time outdoors now than they did a generation ago. And I was right, and I, but I wanted, to, I wanted to read some stats and read some writing about it. Many child psychologists, sociologists, parenting experts, social critics have noted that today's children go outside and play far less frequently than they did a generation ago. And some of that is due to safety concerns because they are pedophiles in our neighborhoods and in our parks, in some neighborhoods and some parks. But some of that children are indoors too much phenomenon is due to a love of technology that has children choosing video games and their tablets and their phones over going outside and working up a good sweat. When I was growing up in the Bronx, New York, and this is, this is not an exaggeration, we would literally spend all day outside except to run inside and get a, grab a quick sandwich and drink some Kool-Aid, which was more sugar than Kool-Aid, and then we go back outside, and I mean, we, we rode our bikes or, or rode our roller skates all day. We didn't, come, we didn't go back inside until it was dark. The children of today, and I read some stats. I read one uh, report from the United Kingdom and one from the US. National Trust Research shows that children are playing outside for an average of four hours a week. When their parents played outside an average of 8.2 hours a week. Here in the US, the stats are even more dismal, or at least equally dismal. An article I read that was published in 2018 stated that children 10 to 16 were spending, listen to this, 12.6 minutes a day on vigorous outdoor activity, compared with 10.4 waking hours in which they're being sedentary. I heard a comedian say, uh, we've got all these, speaking of the same issue, we got all these fat kids running around. He said, well, they're not running around. They, they can't run. Sedentary, not going outside. But before you start sucking your teeth and saying, that's a shame, those kids need to go more. They need to get outside more. The church is equally guilty of being outside far too little. We don't go out enough. We spend our time indoors in our own sanctified huddles. When Jesus is saying go, and if this pandemic has anything positive that might come out of it, it is that we are remembering that we don't need access to the building in order to do ministry. That Jesus' command to go is still to be obeyed. And we don't need to spend all our time in meetings in our building, in studies in our building. So maybe, we need to do more of this. Maybe even after the pandemic, we need to do this once a month so we can be reminded that the church is not the building. It is the people who have heard Jesus' word. Go, get out there. 
Be visible. Make yourself known that you might make me known, says Jesus. Go. The commissioning of the faithful has all to do with people who have heard Jesus' word and understood his deeds, his sacrificial life, who have understood that it has all to do with their now going into the world and making that event and that person known to the world. And the goal part of the Great Commission is not a suggestion, never has been. It is a command. Go. Notice that Jesus doesn't say to the disciples in Mark 16, if you're, you know, wired that way, go out and talk about me. You know, if you're comfortable doing that. You know, if you're, uh, you know, evangelistic in nature. You know, if you're like really into outreach, go. No, he said it to them all. Go. And he says it to us all. Go. Go. Talk me up. Find ways to talk about me. Harry Ironside, a Bible expositor, was once the pastor of the historic Moody Church in Chicago. Harry Ironside wrote, Interest in missions is not an elective in God's university of grace. It is something which every disciple is expected, to, it is something in which every disciple is expected to major. This is not an elective course. Going is something in which we're supposed to major. Go. Nearly half the New Testament occurrences of the Greek word for to go is found in Luke and the book of Acts. It is a word of decisive movement. Go. Now it came to pass, says Luke 9, when the time had come for Jesus to be received up, that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and send messengers before his face. Acts chapter 8. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Did you hear it? Go, go, go. Even Jesus, go. Ah. I read a quote from the writings of Thomas Aquinas, theologian, probably most well known for his devotional book, The Imitation of Christ, 15th century work. Thomas Akempis, and Akempis simply means he was from, he was of Kempen, Germany. Thomas Akempen, or Thomas Akempis wrote a quote that is so sobering. I read it multiple times in my preparation and I want to close by reading it twice. Instant obedience is the only kind of obedience there is. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Whoever strives to withdraw from obedience withdraws from grace. Again, Thomas Akempis, and with this I end. Instant obedience is the only kind of obedience there is. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Whoever strives to withdraw from obedience withdraws from grace. Amen. And let us pray. Holy God, we hear you daring us to go. We hear you commanding us to go. And we confess that we'd rather play inside than to go out. Heal us, we pray, of our spiritually sedentary lives. Forgive us for enjoying our television and our tablets more than we've enjoyed holy conversations about you. Forgive us for our being more eager 
to hang out with people and talk about nothing than looking for strategic ways to talk about you. Give to us, we pray, the spirit of go, that we may find winsome, creative ways to make you known in the earth. Thank you that you have blessed us. Now may we, like Abram, be a blessing. We ask this in the name of him who himself heard the words go and left his earth, his heavenly abode and came to earth to be with us and then went to places full of sin and shined his light in those places. In the name of him who himself heard the word and went. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. To remember our Lord who commands us to remember him. He doesn't tell us how often he simply says, every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, he said to them at a supper, I want you to remember me. We are commanded to remember Jesus. You've received the communion elements as you entered the property this morning. I'm gonna ask the Reverend Sharon Gregory to come out of her car and come to the microphone, please, and pray. Bless these elements that as we eat and drink, we might be ever so mindful of what Jesus has done. And we might remember our Lord and give thanks. Reaches to the highest mountain, it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day would never. God of mercy and compassion, we thank you that on this day we remember. We remember that you went, that you came, that you did count the costs, but you did not let them deter you. That you came to show your abundant forgiveness and your merciful love by sacrificing your body in payment for our sins. What can we do, Lord, to honor you? Today we remember, but let us remember every day as we go forth. In Jesus' name. Beloved, on that night Jesus broke bread, gave thanks, and said to his followers, his disciples, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Let us rejoice. same manner he took the cup said this cup is the new covenant in my blood rejoice that the Lamb of God has been sacrificed and wrote of his love in blood the blood of Christ shed for the remission of sins rejoice
And after he records that they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. So let's sing together this song of, uh, actually in response to Pastor's uh, word that he has brought us, to go. Is it me? Is it you? Yes. Yes, it's all of us. Let's sing together. beloved go that's what Jesus told us to do and may you make a difference in the world go not enjoying so much the sitting and the being indoors but finding ways to talk up our Savior the Lord bless you in your coming conversations the Lord bless you in your meetings you're going to have this week. May you find a way to declare without apology that the person you are and are becoming is all because of Jesus. Go into all the world, starting with Atlanta, starting with Lithonia, starting with Redan, starting with Stone Mountain, 
and may the Lord be honored by all we do and in all we say. May Jesus rise up in you in Loganville and in Snellville and in Grayson. May the Lord be pleased when he looks on us. Go. May we not be the same because we are his. Amen.